Hello up there. It's Brad J. Lamb. You too can become a condo millionaire. The Todd Shapiro Show. Canada Laughs. Sirius XM 168. Brad Lamb's in studio. How you doing, Brad? I'm good, thanks. Nice to see you, man. Good to see you. How's, uh, did you like it when it's hot? you like the hot weather? I do. Yeah. What's it like? You because you're a blazer guy. You always look good, and you're like you have sweet suits and nice blazers. Like is that? <laughs> no, you have the nice. You have really nice clothing. Does that? I mean, when it's really hot and you got to go to a meeting, can you show up without the blazer? Or do people just expect it? You know, I I think that uh, um, in my I think in any line of business, if you want to um, put your best foot forward, I think you should look good. Yeah. Right. So so like I I, I encourage and, and more or less force everyone who works for me to wear a suit or a blazer. Wear jeans if they're you know if they look good. They're kind of modern, cool jeans. Sure. But I, I like to wear uh, a suit. Like I'll wear I'll wear it in the summer. I'll wear jeans or, or some kind of cotton pant. You okay. Know, or you know, yeah. Not shorts with a uh, with a jacket if it's really hot out. But I always wear a suit. Go cool. actually, Jim. I'm just gonna get you to turn that mic a tiny bit towards Brad just so we can hear him a little bit better. Uh, so so I mean, it, when you're growing in business, uh, you know, I heard a story once. My buddy, whose whose dad's actually pretty successful, he said when my dad wasn't successful, he like broke the bank to lease a very nice Jaguar just to appear to kind of have some success behind him because the perception is really a lot a reality in a lot of cases. Was that ever the case for you when you're starting up? Yeah, when I started out selling real estate, um, I had actually been investing in real estate for about uh, six or seven years, and I had a reasonable net worth at that time. Um, I was twenty-seven, um, but I but I was conservative, and I wanted it because I was now a commission guy, you know, a real estate sales guy. So I didn't want to spend uh, too much. So I, I live with my parents actually, but I bought a. Uh, at that time, I thought it was a great car. It was an Alfa Romeo Milano. That's this a great like car. Nineteen eighty-eight yeah. or something. Eighty-seven. Um, so, and I, but I always wore a suit. I always wore a tie and a white shirt. I wanted to look like a banker. You know, I just thought that would be a good look uh, when I met bankers or lawyers or people that wanted to hire me to sell real estate. So I just took that and always, always wanted to be like, maybe not the best dressed guy in the room, but, but, but one of the best dressed guys in the room. Always want to have a great car. Car smells good. Didn't really matter where you live because people, um, they don't come to your house. Clients generally don't come to your house, right? So, yeah, a nice watch. First thing I could, I, first time I could afford anything outside of a car, uh, and I and I think I rented my car. I think it was a lease. Sure. Um, I bought a nice Cartier watch at the time. I thought it was like, wow, Cartier watch. So I wanted to look successful for sure when I was young. Interesting. And, and, and do you feel that it, it would help? I mean, is that some advice you might give to young entrepreneurs that like, you know, don't obviously break the bank to the point where you can't afford to put stuff back in your business or if you're a realtor or whatever it may be. But, you know, make sure that you look a certain part that that will go a long way. Well, certainly in sales, the number one thing I think is your first, the first impression you make is the number one thing. And, and that means you don't have to be good looking, but you have to look good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have no shot in hell. I wear ball caps and flip. Well, I was wearing flip flops. Brad noticed them right when I came to the door. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I have I have very nice flip flops actually. I have um uh not Burberry. What's the other one? Anyway, Louis Vuitton flip flops. I bought once when I was like making some decent money in the day. Uh, and I always thought that would be able to pull it off with those. Like you know they don't let you in a club because you're flip flops. I'm like yeah, but they're more expensive than anybody's shoes here. Okay. You, you know men's feet should be covered. Men's yeah. ah. They're disgusting. Men's feet are my feet. And are unless, disgusting. unless you're on a beach or in a karate competition, you should cover your feet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Advice from Brad J. Land. Men's feet should be covered. I have no fucking open hell. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I saw an article the other day, and it was neat because we go back and forth with your guy, Ryan, who you said is one of the most important dudes in your life uh, because he just helps schedule you and help put you in line. And, and, you know, he's just great for you and he helps. And you rely on him, which is important. Uh, there's an article that I saw and I posted up on our Facebook page relating it back to you actually saying, I wonder what Brad J. Lamb would think and it stirred up some comments. And then it was the first thing that the Brian suggested we talk about today. There was an article in the Toronto Star about the potential one day of the CN Tower coming down for potential condo development, essentially saying the, val the land here is too valuable for the CN Tower for, you know, what is for. What are your thoughts on this? Hmm. That's a tough one. I mean, I think, I think, uh, you know, it, it's, it hasn't been here forever, right? I mean, I think 76 yes. is when it's built. Um, so, I mean, it's not like it's truly historic. Um, so I, I'm kind of 50, 50 on this. I mean, I think if I could, I, I don't know. I, I think that, um, there is a strong economic reason to knock it down, 
but there's the stuff that pulls your heartstrings, which, you know, so the best solution to this is a city to uh, slap a historic designation on that. So the conversation can't be had any further. How does that, how does that process work? Just a couple guys going into a historic site. You can never touch it. Yep. Yeah. It's very, very, <laughs> very arbitrary. Really? It is. Uh, I do like, you know, could Tory get behind that conversation even, or, or is it? He doesn't need to. In fact, there's, there's a, there's a person who heads up the, that his, the historic, uh, division or whatever it's called in the city of Toronto. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, dictatorship basically. <laughs> and what she wants, she, she enacts. And if you don't do it, you need to go to court and fight it. So right now, in fact, the city is uh, taking a red pen and marking off virtually every building with even any brick on it in the, what they call it the West precinct, which is between Spadina and Bathurst uh, south of Queen to Front Street. Okay. Um, and they're just, any building that has any red brick on it, it's now historic. That's what they're trying to make happen. Meaning, can you build up on any of these well, sites? You know what, man? What, they, what this department wants is to preserve the building entirely. Why? What's ridiculous? <laughs> First of all, it's, it's a disaster for us. These are inner city buildings that, that uh, take up valuable real estate that needs to be more dense for mm -hmm. people to be able to work and live in the city, right? We don't want to sprawl the city. That's the whole point of all this, uh, you know, the whole point of the green belt legislation, all the other things we're trying to do to make the city, uh, you know, more green. Um, the, the idea of, of preventing these buildings from being developed is, is silly, really. And, and by the way, I own a bunch of those buildings are trying to do that too. Yeah. And I, listen, I, I just I just bought a mansion on Wellington. I think I talked about this earlier. It's the last standing mansion on Wellington Street West. We we're meeting the city tomorrow to talk about the redevelopment of it. We're keeping the mansion. Like yeah. Like it, it, where where a building really has merit, this building does, and I'm all for it. But slapping a designation on a building because there's some red brick on it, I, I just think that's stupid. Yeah. I mean, what what's the what's the point of it? I you know I don't I don't I don't things evolve in life. And, and, and I think, you know, in my opinion, it's like, why not evolve with the city? Why, if we, you know, maybe there's a couple of real historic sites. I would understand that. That, that meant a lot to the growth of the city, but just because it's an old building. Huh. Yeah. Well, the thing seems is, like I a mean, waste. The, the thing is it changes, right? So if you look at, at the, the empire state building or the Chrysler building in New York, which are iconic buildings and, you know, if you wanted to knock those down, you'd get in a ton of shit. Right? Yeah. It wouldn't happen, right? Well, those buildings knocked down. I mean, to get them there, great, you know, historic buildings were knocked down, you know, 100 years ago or 80, 85 years ago. And, and so, like, Man, cities have to grow and mutate. It's silly to, to just arbitrarily slap historic uh, designation. How about this? You buy the CN Tower. Yeah. And you preserve it like you're doing with the Wellington Mansion. Yeah. And building around it, and you just build condos that are attached to it, and then you can like you can see inside. <laughs> that. that would be a place I'd want to move to. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I, you know it's a huge piece of land, right? So you could do yeah. you could redevelop the base of it. It's a lot of useless stuff around it. Sure, um, but I think you're gonna have a very hard time knocking that building up. Did, did they? Did the city fuck out? You know, and I and listen. Everyone, you know, we, we we talk to people in the United States. We talk to people all across Canada. But you know, I do look at Toronto, and this isn't a biased thing. I look at Toronto as like the New York of of America. You know, like, and I think that's a fair way to look at it. And again, it's not to say we don't love people in Vancouver or in Calgary, or whatever. But you know, Toronto is a special place, and it has developed, uh, you know, much uh, far greater uh, in terms of mass and people and density than any of the other cities. And that's just a given by statistics. So when I look at the lakeshore and what's happened at the C and E and stuff. It, is that sad that nothing really beautiful happened there? Like, is that is that yeah. is that a tragedy? Yeah, listen, you know what? I love Toronto, and Toronto is becoming a really fun, exciting city. But as cities go, it's a pant shitter. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Like you know, we, like we just you know we can't get our transit together. You know, no one. We, like why? I don't understand why. Why don't we put tolls on the highways? Take the money from people driving into the city, driving out of the city. They're, they're polluting the green air. I, I'm, I'm polluting with my super nice fast cars, right? Not, I'll yeah. pay. Make people pay. And then take that money and use it to service debt to build an amazing subway system, right? Why, like, you know, why, why are the buildings in Toronto mostly mundane? Because we, we're, we're afraid to be great in a city. Like when we take great buildings to our planning department or to local councillors, they don't want to hear about it. They want to know, like, what's not going to get me in trouble? 
What, what, how can I follow the rules? Let's break some rules in the city and create some magnificent architecture, take some chances, really take some chances. This is not a city that's easy to take chances in. People won't let you. Would you ever run for politics? Never. Never. <laughs> Not not I'd get, I'd get slaughtered. <laughs> you get well. You never know. No, I mean, I get slaughtered. Businessmen look. Like, Trump's doing all right. <laughs> yeah, but he's still getting slaughtered. Yeah, he's anyway, getting... I'm nothing like that guy. But I mean, no, I know. I would say what I thought, and I would get slaughtered. You would, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. The, the UK's Guardian just named Toronto the most fascinatingly boring city in the world. Did that a few days ago. Put out that article. Isn't that interesting? Well, actually, that's kind of to my point of it being yeah. a city that's a pants shitting city, in that. Brad, I'm just going to twist the mic a little bit just so I can hear you or get Jay to twist it. Just, uh, yeah, like uh, twist it to the right. Okay, thank you. Sorry, man. I mean, like I said, I love the city and there's some great things happening, but this city could be so great if we just let it go. Just let us do some great things here. But you, there's so much fighting. It's so hard. Is it just very Canadian? Is, is, that, is that what it comes down to? Maybe. Maybe not I mean, taking enough chance. Like, like we need more Jerry Jones of the world, right? Like we're like which you are. Like you know, we're just going to make the best. <laughs> Of the best, we're just we're going to put money, and it's going to it's going to be profitable, and we're going to we're going to do things a little bit differently. Well, yeah, we we need to think differently to create a different city. We need to think in a modern term, and not what was, and you know what it's more about what can be. And you know, when when I go into, I can't even go into public meetings anymore. I just lose my temper. <laughs> I just want to punch people. I want to follow you with a camera. So I, I just I, I I try to stay out of them, be, and I if I if I am there, I don't say anything. I just listen. But the the comments of residents around new buildings are so I understand they're they're afraid they don't understand the process, but they're so terrified of change, right? Even if it's good change, they're terrified. That's how our city works. Very frustrating. Is, is there any hope to still build up uh, around the lake and you know like make Ontario Place cooler all that? Because it's just so like I know there's the one hotel going up around there, but that's like, horrible. And it's it's it, it just does it does it's it's ridiculous to me. It does it just stands out as a sore thumb? Like why? I don't know. Why aren't they doing anything with that great area? It's so it's so beautiful. You know that hotel looks like a 1970s Hilton in some shit American city. You know, like like a the second tier, like Milwaukee. Yeah. Sorry, Milwaukee, but that kind of thing, right? It's like, why are we building stuff like that on that? You know what the problem is? It's controlled by the Ontario government and nothing great is going to come from that. It has to be put, like, it has to be put in the, in the hands of creative people that are going to do something amazing. And that's not government. It never is government. And is this the way it is around, like, all of Canada in, in terms of trying to build cool and, and creatively and, and fun and, and kind of making a difference? Or are, are we really restricted more in Ontario for some reason? Well, I'm trying to think of, uh, I mean, listen, there's some great, there are, there are some great things going on in Toronto or in Canada. But, I mean, look at City Place and look at the Concord Pacific Lands in, in, in Vancouver. Just the most mundane, horrible crap in the way of housing. No thought of, ur you know, an urban feel to it. It just feels like that could be Scarborough. If you close your eyes and spin around and get a bit confused, you could be in Scarborough with that. Not that Scarborough, well, Scarborough's not the nicest place in the world. So, I mean, and, and if you go out to BC, you know, beautiful, Vancouver's a beautiful setting, you know. But, but what uh, Concord Pacific did, uh, which is the sister company of the one that did this here in Toronto, mm. Concord ADEX, okay. owned by the same people. And they just basically plopped out horrible grass, glass buildings that have no architectural merit whatsoever, you know. And it's, it was all for the for expediency of of making money and possibly also, you know, you're dealing with politicians and planning departments that don't want to be creative. So that could be part of it too. It's easier for them to approve those types of buildings because they're not going to be, uh, you know, it's just, oh yeah, we've seen this before. Right. Right. <laughs> okay, great. We'll approve that. It looks exactly like the last one I saw. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, British Columbia and BC, uh, re the real estate council of British Columbia is no longer allowed to self-regulate. So what does that mean for their housing market and what could this do to self-regulation in other markets? Well, Ontario, the, the premier just came out after that announcement and said that uh, Ontario will continue to self-regulate. I don't think there's a problem with self-regulation. I think there's a problem um, with that particular city. And, um, and, and it's largely because I think that city is being picked over by investors, mm -hmm. mostly foreign investors. And I think that, uh, that um, you know, there's a bit of a free-for-all there, so they possibly need to rein it in, but I don't think that that's necessary. One of the other things that they're doing, which I think um, it, it's going to, it's a bad idea, but they're they're going to make it illegal to have dual agency. 
And dual agency is where, and this is going to be a new thing in BC, where the buyer can deal directly with the seller's agent to buy the property directly from them rather than bring their own agent. And that's allowed in Ontario with proper disclosure. It's allowed everywhere in Canada, except now, uh, Christy Clark said, first thing they're going to do is uh, eliminate that. But isn't that kind of good for... I mean, obviously, it's good for the agent because they'd get double commit. Is that is there a problem with that? Like, is there is there what what would the problem with that be? Well, the problem with that could be that you're you 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 know so you ultimately know what the seller will take, and uh, you know what the seller and the you know what the buyer will pay, and so you do an easy deal. But I think the bigger problem is what it's going to do is going to create these. It's going to kill. So so imagine you're a listing agent. And someone calls you and says, "Yeah, I'm interested in that property. Well, I can't talk to you." What do you mean? Well, I can't talk to you. You have to you have to go retain an agent to get information because I can't talk to you. So it's going to kill the listing part of the business. And I foresee what's going to happen mm. is major, major organizations becoming listing organizations. And all they'll do is they'll charge you $300 or $400 to put your property in MLS. And then you as the owner will have to negotiate directly with a buyer's agent. And so I think the problem is, is that it puts an onus on owners. They don't have that knowledge and expertise. They don't. And I think, I don't know, I think it's uh I think, I think that's the evolution of what's going to happen in BC. It won't happen right away, but within five years, I can see people starting up internet businesses that are basically saying, listen, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have 4,000 or 5,000 listings at a time. We'll charge a flat fee, and all we'll do is, you know, if, if, if uh, people, you know, we'll put your number on the listing so it goes directly to the owner, and maybe you can pay, you know, fee for service. So if you want someone to show up and represent you, at an offer, but they're going to be shitty at it. I mean, you know, they're, like they're not going to be good, experienced people, right? I just think it's, I think it's unfortunate that that's going to happen, and it will probably ultimately, like all these things, like like gay marriage, which by the way is a great thing to happen, and like marijuana in the states, which now it's ricocheting through states, right? Uh, and I think that's a good thing too. But I think what's going to happen is once it takes a toehold in BC, it'll start to spread to other other provinces, and it'll also probably move to the states. Is the one benefit of that maybe that it eliminates bad agents as well, though? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it will it will eliminate the possibility of bad agents taking advantage of naive people. But yeah. I think that, you know, human beings need to be responsible for things. So when you hire a lawyer, mm -hmm. you want to hire a good lawyer. You want to, yep. you want to research it. You want to interview people. When you hire a doctor or when you hire... Uh, you know, if you're getting your boobs done and you go and you want to get a boob job, you don't want someone who's going to hack up your boobs. Right? I know, so you I didn't. I was, I, that's why I haven't gotten, I haven't found the doctor to do me yet. Well, they are just, rare. Yeah, think, okay. yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the same thing goes when you, so if you're hiring a real estate agent, you have to do the work to hire someone that's trustworthy. Check As opposed out. to just being handed one, right? Yeah, check it out. Call people who ask for a list of references. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, it's it, that's, so that's ultimately what's going on in BC and, and I think it's a bad idea, but it's going to happen anyway. Uh, what are self injection sites? And I know there, there's three of them that have been approved, uh, that have been approved in the downtown core here in Toronto. Oh, well, yeah. So, um, if you're a, uh, if you're a habitual drug user, uh, the government's now, um, mm. set up some places where you can go and safely get needles and inject yourself with, uh, narcotics. That's right. Yeah. And so some of the, I guess the concern is that those might bring down the value of real estate in, in those areas. But I, I'm, I, I, again, personally, I think drugs should be legal. I think it's, you know, the only way to get crime out of drugs is to make drugs legal and leave it up to people. If you want to overdose in heroin, overdose in heroin. I mean, why is that my responsibility, your responsibility to worry about? We're, we're all adults and we're all responsible for our own lives, right? And, and, and having, like, we're losing this, like this drug on wars or war on drugs, sorry. This war on drugs is being lost. It's silly. And all that's happening is that massive gangs, massive, you know, you see what's going on in Mexico with this, right? Oh, dude. It's, the, it's, the hangings from bridges, the, the family, entire family. Worse stuff than yeah. that, man. People it's, that are being melted. Oh, God. I'm actually reading this good book right now about that. But anyway, I, I think. <laughs> what's the book called? <laughs> it's called uh, The Drug Gangs of Mexico. Okay. Yeah. Jeez. Good book. Sounds like a, a book Brody would love. Yeah. But anyway, I think that, that um, you know, these th there's always going to be people that, that drink too much and, and do drugs. You're not going to stop that. And so having a safe place to do it's good. And I think the next step is to get government involved in it and make some taxes and money on it. I mean, because at the end of the day, they're taxing, you know, they're. Uh, you know, alcoholics and drug addicts are taxing our system, right, through medical costs. So why not balance it out? Yeah, get some some taxes from the use of it. Mm -hmm. right? No, I, I mean I I couldn't agree with you more. And I'm not just saying that because because you're here. 
<laughs> I actually believe in that. Um, and, and so you you don't think that'll affect real uh, like your, your real estate prices? People are gonna aren't, aren't gonna aren't gonna worry too much, are they? No, you know there was one of those uh, near my office uh, on Front Street, and it's very discreet. It is. I don't think it'll be a problem at all. You know, it's funny because I um I think about when when I first met you, which would have been now uh fuck like twelve years ago in that you know old building on on Stewart Street downtown Street, in, in yeah. Toronto, yeah. and like. Everywhere you were, you'd walk over a crackhead. I mean, they had old, like l little old warehouses that they were, like, you know, breaking in and living in and stuff. And I never thought, oh, it's not going to be like it's just downtown culture. It's downtown life. Like, there's that to me is what I love most about a city like Toronto is it's you know it's it's especially because it was harmless. You know, it was, I felt like it was safer back then than it is now with you know uh, cleaned up too much. Well, there are probably more <laughs> drug abusers now. It's a bigger city, and and I think also that. Poor people are, or people that are disadvantaged, are more disadvantaged now than they were yeah. back then, and that was like 2001, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's sad. The the divide's getting greater. Yep. Um, Brad Lamb joins us. TorontoCondos.com. Brad J. Lamb Realty, of course. Uh, Park Brand Street Theater Park. Uh, these are the names of your project uh, projects. Where do, where do you come up? Like, how do you come up with the names? Well, so um, I mean, I come up with all the names. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my brother, who's a partner in the development company, always rolls his eyes. This is why you want to call it that. He's got terrible taste in it. <laughs> but um, I, so I kind of go in these, these like, so with Park, I, I like the name Park with a C. I just thought it was kind of different than Park with a K. And the building was on a park. It just mm -hmm. made sense called Park. I don't know. I look at the building and I look at what we're trying to accomplish. And one of our new projects is called Bauhaus. Um, I'm on this house thing. I'm doing Camden House, Bauhaus, and Wellington House. Cool. I kind of get in that rut where I'm doing a themed kind of name situation. So um, like Bauhaus, we're going to build in the international, you know, Bauhaus style, the modern style. And Wellington House is an old house in Wellington, so it makes sense. Yeah. And, and Camden House is going to be made into kind of a, it's going to look like a private club from the outside, you know, like one of those British clubs. It would be called like, you know, the, I don't know, like the Killarney Club or something. Cool. You know, a private club. So uh, the names just come from an idea or a location. And I try to make them, different and cool. Like I don't like names like Vibe or Miami, you know, or South Beach or London, that kind of stuff. Cause that's, you know, those are bullshit names. They have nothing sure. to do with Toronto, you know? Do you, have you ever regretted a name of a building after? Uh, well, I'll tell you what I called, <laughs> I called a project uh, that I thought was Leslieville and I called it Leslieville Lofts. And it turned out it got everyone upset in the neighborhood because apparently the neighborhood had been just rechristened Riverside. Oh, no. Uh, and I didn't even know Riverside existed. And that really pissed off the, the people that lived. This is like eight years ago. Sure. The people that lived there. And the council was very upset with me. And uh, it was actually a, like a, it was brought up several years later as a major. And, and we took it to the OMB and lost. And it was like this really got the neighborhood riled up to fight the project because I was, I guess, too arrogant to check that it wasn't in oh. Leslieville. It was in Riverside. But I just thought everything like this was a while ago. But I just, you know, you look at these maps of all the names of areas in Toronto and it's a bit like, come on, some of these tiny little sections have their own name. It's a bit funny, really. I was a oh, sort intro. I was at <laughs> I did it. I hosted a grilled cheese fest um, in the Mimico area or whatever. Yeah. And then and they had their city councilor there. Um, and, and I said, uh, they, I guess they call that area new Toronto. Right. And I had no idea. So I, I, I was, so I was hosting, I'm like, and I asked the guy, I'm like, so, and I interviewed him, I go, when, when did they name this new Toronto? And he goes, Oh, a hundred years ago. Well, like, that's the thing. <laughs> These neighborhoods have been, but, you know, but, but they got kind of, they got kind of lost for a while. Right. Uh -huh. And like with Leslieville, I thought once you cross, you know, Queen street, and you're into the East End, it's like Leslieville <laughs> in the beach. That's what I thought. Yeah. Apparently. Anyway, so yeah, that was a name I regret because I got pasted for it. I guess that's an important thing, though, as a developer, though, to, to you know, it, the, the people do take pride in their areas they live. They do. And and I guess that's kind of a cool thing. It's you know, great, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've, I have a strong sort of sense of pride for my neighborhood because, um, you know... <laughs> That's where I live. And I, I went to my city council and asked to pave the laneway. And they eventually did. Like, you know, like they, I wanted to make sure it looked neater. Well, and you're one of those guys. I, I, I never <laughs> was in my life. And then I just thought it would be a great place to, you know, play basketball in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, okay. I, you know, it is an amazing thing, really. Yeah. Like, you know, you want people to care about their neighborhood. And it, when they care about their neighbor, the neighbor looks great. Yes. And it's safe. And that's, yeah, that's all yeah. I wanted just to make. I yeah. thought the alley, like, I love alleyways 
because I thought it's such a great place to play with. You know, you have your kid, you can you know play road hockey there. No, you can't or, play road hockey anymore. Oh, that's right. They don't let you anymore. Or I think there's a new, I think the ah, city stupid. of Toronto is proposing. I think they are proposing a bylaw to stop that. I hope they change I think that. think so. And then I thought it would be a great place for neighbors just to go and get drunk at night. Like, you just yeah. go and walk around and open your garage doors. You're and, right, having an alley party. That'd yeah. be a great idea. I mean, I, and that sort of was kind of my idea behind it. Anyway, uh, Brad J. Lim, uh, we, we always appreciate when you come on the program, and uh, we're excited to see you uh, every single Wednesday uh, around 5 o'clock is when Brad J. Lim comes here and uh, comes in. TorontoCondos.com is where to go. Brad J. Lamb Realty, of course, and, and the the, the the opportunities that you have for investments are, are just brilliant people. So make sure you reach out and get in touch with one of his very well-dressed agents. <laughs> we appreciate it, Brad. Thank you for being here. The Todd Shapiro Show. Canada Laughs. Sirius XM 168. Todd Shapiro show. All right. We really appreciate you watching that video. Make sure you check out some more videos. Why not? Let's get caught in the Shapiro show vortex right here, or you can subscribe to the channel right here and check out videos at any point. Cause we're going to give you all the alerts. We do appreciate you being a part of our family. Most families hate each other. Not ours. We love you.